Hey, Yoda! Tinegut 2, hello and welcome back to another episode of Thumbcraft 4.2 with Birdtross. And let me just say, guys, that it is awesome to have your company. How are you doing today? How has your day been? If you're watching this in the evening, how is your day going if it's the afternoon? And how's your day going to be if it's the morning? <laughs> Anyway guys, regardless of what time you're watching, thank you very much for choosing me as your source of entertainment to kick the day off, get through the day, or finish the day off. I kind of have to compensate because of all the various different parts of the world, but it's great to have you here all the same. We are right next to the arcane alembics here for the alchemical furnace. Let me get my goggles of revealing back on and we'll get the... Thormium armor on as well, took that off for the intro. So we have some spear aspects inside from all of our doings with the with yesterday's episode doing some infusion crafting. So in order to get these out with the files like I was doing in that episode, you need to have eight of the aspect in there. But at the moment, most of these have got four, some of them have two. And you guys in the comments were telling me that if I take water jars. Ooh, it does work. Yes, indeed, you can get this out with water jars. I was wondering, and it looks like you can, and actually these water jars... Oh, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> can you get... I don't know, well, dang it, because I've got water jars over here for my Pedicio and Terror and whatnot, so I kind of didn't really think that one through, but whatevs. They're in there now. So, uh, jars don't stack, by the way, each is their own separate thing. This chest is now pretty much full. Is there anything that we can take out? Looks like we can probably take the signs. This is the... This is basically my Essentia chest. So, last episode as well, we were also trying to craft these guys right here. The charged Thormium 1 cap and Silverwood rod. That was the subject of last episode. Oh, it's right here. The problem is that this recipe right here requires 51.3 Vs, which is more Vs than our wand here can hold, a capacity of 50. And so I was thinking, before I looked in the comments for last episode as well, I was thinking that we could do a workaround here if I used gold, and the theory, my theory was, is that it would cost less Vs, and it turns out that it does, and you'd end up with a gold banded silverwood wand, which would have a capacity of 100, and then I could use this bad boy to make the thormium charged one, but... You guys in the comments, you're also quite resourceful as well, and you have told me about a very cool thing here in the Thormonomicon known as Enchanted Fabric. But before I go ahead and take a look at that, I would actually like to quickly uh, scan these various materials here. I don't think I've scanned my wand actually, so let's get that down as well. And you guys were also telling me, man, you guys have been supporting the series heaps. Once again, thank you very much. You guys were telling me to research my pickaxe as well, perhaps helping with the arcane boar. So th let's go ahead and get all these things on the ground and scan them in one big scanning fest of scanniness. <laughs> oh hey, that actually looks different when it's on the ground. I did not notice that. Okay, and it does recognize it. Hey, 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 two instrumentum and three precantatio. Thank you. Silverwood Wand, or Silverwood Rod, gives you 6 air, 6 auto, 5 Pedicio, 9 of Pregantasio, 5 Terra, and 5 Vitreous. Very nice. A charged Thormium Cap. I didn't think to charge the inert one, or scan the inert one, unfortunately. That has 6 air, 2 Aurum, 3 Ignis, 3 auto. How much Potentia is that? It's 3. And that's 6 Pregantasio there as well. Very nice. We'll save that guy for last. Let's take a look at the gold cap. I'm expecting a similar story. One air, one Ignis, three Metallum, and one Auto. Cool beans. And finally, let's see what happens. Da 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 ding! Hello! So that's one Arbor, four Instrumentum, nine Metallum, six Precantatio, and Perfodio! The new aspect. It looks like it's an aspect specifically for mining and it has four of it in there i couldn't quite see that because it was white text over a, a white background right there but that's awesome 
Okay, those are actually quite different, aren't they? Huge difference. Sweet! Did I scan that? I did. I haven't... You can't actually scan a thermometer, I don't think. Maybe I can scan a clock now, I think. That's right, Dub, I think, told me to do this, so let's check. Okay, that's got six lucrum, two machine, an imitalum, and... I can't read the potential. I can't read those white aspects, unfortunately. Right, well, that's cool! We have a new aspect. And me thinks... that if we go ahead and take a look... at this guy... Oh, oh yes, this is the arcane boar guy right here. So, Pophodio, what does that take to craft? That takes Humanus and Terra. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Sweet! So, we need now what we really need to do is link that guy back up, and we should be able to get to crafting the uh, this thing here. But I guess before we get started with this as well, let's go ahead and do this research that's over here, the Enchanted Fabric. Oh, hold on. Okay, that just that's Pophodio right there. Right, what was I looking for? It's under here, under artifice, that's right. Enchanted Fabric. So, once again, you guys in the comments sort of tipped me off that perhaps Enchanted Fabric will allow us to create a more powerful wand. Let's go ahead and check. This is just one that you purchase. It takes three Pandas and three Precantatio. Let's go ahead and get that. Oh, wow, that's unlocked two new things. That's unlocked the Boots of the Traveler, another item that I remember from Thorncraft, very cool. These boots made for walking. And then over here, we have runic shielding. Shields up! Oh, that reminds me about the, um... Oh dear, that reminds me about the crash that I had. If you remember last episode, I was talking about that crash. It turns out that aside from resetting my achievements and statistics as well, that has also wiped my Bauble's inventory, and I was wearing the Beast Stone, as well as the rune, the Ring of Protection, the Runic Shield plus one ring that we found, and I also had a Ring of Apprentice's Ring of Auto, and our Focus Pouch. So yes, the two foci that were inside that. Well, hold on, I can't press F. That's right, you can't press F because we I don't have any foci, foci to use. So yeah, but this is the only focus that we have left. And I was also wondering, is there a way to actually take this focus off the wand? It turns out there is. All you have to do is hold shift, and then press F, and that will take the focus off. And so then, that's how you clear a wand, and you just press F to put that back on. So we don't have any focus apart from the spark one, which is really not very good. So I will need to get around to crafting myself a new focus pouch, and I might even just go here off camera and do that. But anyway... Let's go ahead and read up on Enchanted Fabric. Silk and Stylish. By combine, uh, combining spider silk and wool and infusing it with primal vase, you have created a silky length of magical cloth that would have numerous uses. You have also discovered patterns to create cloth robes from the magical fabric. These robes have similar protective properties to leather armor, but they are much more durable than mundane materials could ever be. They also hold mystical enchantments very well, and can hold powerful magic much better than even expensive armor. So there it is, enchanted fabric. In order to craft it, looks like we're going to need full string, and any of the 16 wool types, as well as one of each of the primal aspects. Cool. The various pieces of this outfit grant a small discount to the amount of this strain from casting wands when you use them. Oh, okay, I see. So we can... that makes it sound like we can cheapen it. You can dye the armor like you would leather armor. Oh, that's cool as well, and that just looks like it takes... Okay, so that's going to take like... I can't remember how much it is. It's like 40 or so? So 8... So it's a... Uh, Okay, so there's only three items. Oh, there's no there's no helm piece. Okay, because of the goggles are revealing, I see. So this gives a vest discount of 2%. This gives a vest discount of 2 and that's also 1%. That's a total of 5. Will that be enough? I guess there's only one real way to find out. So we're going to need 7 plus 4 plus 8, which is 16 plus 3, 19. I should have enough materials to craft that, actually. Let's take a quick look in my chests. I don't know, I've kind of, I'm taking, <laughs> I'm kind of distracted. 
I'm crafting now. I do have enough of these. I wanted to craft the arcane ball, but man, I just want to get this new wand up and running. That's so cool. And my string is stored over here. Right, so hopefully I have enough of this. Maybe I don't actually. Maybe I don't, but we'll, uh, let's see. I've d I, it's not like I've been going out of my way to collect string. This is just from going out at night and collecting various bits and bobs. So, yeah, so that's going to turn into 16. So, hmm. All right, that's easy enough. Enchanted fabric. Actually, we can actually decrease the cost if we're a little bit uh, careful with our spending here. We'll go ahead and pick up seven, like so. And then we'll need to get these back out, and we should be able to craft ourselves the very first piece of this armor. That's going to take five aqua, which I do have. Nice one. The Thaumaturge's leggings with a beast discount of 2%. Awesome. Just go ahead and leave that in there because we're about to come back. Okay. Hello. Oh. It's sort of a bit uh, bare bones there, guy. Okay, I guess it's supposed to sort of go on the bottom of the main robe piece. Well, let's go ahead and see how cheap this is now. If I get all of these together. Yeah, I'm still a few of these short, which is unfortunate. Let's go ahead and pick up eight. And I can only craft two more pieces. Ugh. So we'll go ahead and save that then. Save my resources. Right, so that's now going to cost 4.65. Oh, so that was a normal cost of 5, I'm guessing. So that is a 0.4 discount, which isn't too bad. Thaumaturge is a robe. A discount of 2%. Very cool. Let's get that guy on. Oh, oh there we go. Well, that looks kind of cool. So it said that this can hold all sorts of powerful enchantments, or I'm guessing that refers to the the Thorncraft specific enchantments, repair and haste. Well, that does look very interesting, doesn't it? It seems a bit uh, I don't know. The colours just seem a bit consistent. That's actually kind of surprising with Thorncraft. Uh, one of the main beauties that I like about Thorncraft is the whole aesthetic. You can see here that these look pretty cool. Everything's got a really nice texture, but that just seems kind of... Uh, seems kind of plain, or are the colours too... Are the colours too similar for me? No, it does look like they're... Hmm. I don't know. I would work on that texture if I was Azanor. I'm just saying. Alright. So now we've got these things giving us a total vis discount of quite a bit less. Let's see if it's enough for this wand to actually be able to craft the silverwood wand. Okay, that's going to be 49.1. Yes! <laughs> 49.14. Excellent, 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 excellent. <laughs> this can now hold. I can now craft that with this wand, so I think what I need to do is take a short little break. I'm going to go ahead and travel around to my various nodes across the world, and when I return I'll have 50 V stored in this guy, and we'll go ahead and craft ourselves a new wand. So sit tight guys, I'll be right back. I have returned, and just take a look at this scene. Hmm. <laughs> so we have the uh, amber lamp. I forget exactly what it's called. I'll have to get my Thormonomicon back out. <clears throat> the arcane lamp, of course, that's what it's called. The arcane lamp is still inside here. I just wanted to see if covering it in cobblestone would actually affect the light levels in here at all. And it doesn't. So that basically says to me that I can completely hide light sources and platform inside of platforms and walls and things and it will still work which is actually really cool because you know just having a bunch of torches on your floor doesn't look particularly good in glowstone lamps well they are my favorite block in the game they are rather sort of obvious so having something like that just completely covered it's like where's the light source where's the light source i don't know because i placed it so long ago i can't remember <laughs> 
Anyway, the wand has been charged up to full, so I need to eat some steak. I'm going to touch the steak farm and killed some more of those guys to get that, but what we need to do is get these guys back on. I guess we need to get these out too. Kind of helps when you're crafting that and they are the ingredients. Put this stuff on. And it's time. It's time. Oh, echo, echo, echo. <laughs> Man, that used almost 50 Vs. Well, there we go. The Thormium Bost. Silverwood Wand. Doesn't have a single piece of Vs to its name. Well, that kind of sucks. I guess what we need to do is get the focus off. That would have been a good time to reveal that and plop that on the new guy. And this thing can pretty much be retired, actually. I do have this thing right here. It actually has 25 inside it, so I'm probably going to go ahead and charge the gold banded wand up at some point. But cool. We got ourselves a new wand. The discount on that, I don't know. It won't, it won't say until there's anything in there. But anyway, that's pretty cool. New wand. Wand focus shock. Anyway, it is time to get onto some research at last. Okay. So that is going to take instrumentum. So let's just take a quick look at this Pophodio one here, Humanus and Terra. Can I get to around Terra easily? I should be able to. Let's just take a quick look. Uh, for most of the enchantments, yeah, here we go. So I can go from there. Okay, I can, I can use Vitreus to get over to Auto. That works out quite nicely, actually. I think Instrumentum connects right to Auto too, so yeah, okay, that works. So I can do something like Auto right there. And then I should be able to do Terra Vitreous. That connects, that's all good, and Vitreous should go right here. That works out, and then Motus is a pretty easy one as well. That just sets a conduit between A and Auto, easy stuff. I may even just use Motus right there. And Machina. Uh, don't have much experience with Machina. I guess just Motus and Instrumentum as well. Okay. Well, this is a pretty easy one then. I guess we'll just we'll just do the standard combos. Probably go Herba. Oh, no, I guess we have to go. Yeah, we'll go Air as well. We we have actually have a lot of Air now, so no no biggie. Um. Okay, hmm. I need to go like Arba, Aya, Motus is probably what I have to do. So let's do that. Arba, Aya, Motus. Nice, easy. Arcane Boar, Mining Evolved. Let's get that guy researched up. Cool stuff, that looks really cool as well. Oh. And it even centers on it as well, which is really nice for navigation purposes. You have discovered a device capable of extending the range and power of an excavation focus. Of even greater use is the fact that that machine can do so without your constant supervision. You merely need to place it on a specially constructed base, point it in the right direction with the wand, and apply a redstone signal. The Akeem Ball requires two things to function. The first is an excavation focus placed in its leftmost inventory slot. Any enchantments applied to the focus will also alter the functions of the bore. Okay, so here is the arcane bore, sort of like a drill bit I guess is sort of the inspiration here. It's going to require one great wood plank, two great wood planks rather, two gold ingots, a diamond pickaxe and a diamond shovel, as well as an air and earth shard. Also, we're going to need 32 Machina, 16 Modus, 32 Pathodio. Ah, right, that's going to be a hard one to get. We're also going to need Potentia as well as Vacua, so... This one is quite a difficult one, gotta say. Instability moderate, although those things that we made yesterday had an instability of moderate, so I'm not too concerned about that. 
Secondly, you need to place any kind of pickaxe into the rightmost slot. The material of the pickaxe will have little effect on the operation of the ball, but the greater its durability, the longer it will last. Like the wand, any enchantments or special abilities of the pickaxe will also be applied to whatever the ball mines, so yeah, silk touch is probably what we need there. An arcane ball can only be placed above or below an arcane ball base. Any items mined will be ejected from the base in the direction its nozzle is pointing. Okay. It will eject in an, into an inventory if possible. This direction can be changed with a wand. Right. Okay, so the item, I'm guessing that makes it sound like the items sort of come out of this thing and you need to put a chest right next to it or what have you. So that's going to take four great wood planks, four iron and a dispenser and an arcane workbench as well as 10 air and 10 auto. So this is way easier. <laughs> the ball can be powered with Pedicio Essentia or Vis, which will greatly speed up the rate at which it mines. Vis or Essentia can be provided by pipes and or relays as normal. One point of Pedicio Essentia will speed the ball for the next 20 blocks mined. Alternatively, 5 CV is required per block mined, and the ball can accept up to 100 CV per tick. Ha! Right. So there's actually going to be a heck of a lot of a heck of a lot of work involved and getting this thing up and running and by the sounds of this stuff at the end there are going to be some mechanics involved that we're not quite uh, familiar with yet by the looks of it. Oh and it's going to need a piston too so yeah this is definitely the uh, most difficult thing that I've ever had to craft thus far. I think I'm going to actually probably between episodes I'm probably going to have to prepare all these materials and we'll come back in that next episode and just start off the episode by crafting it. You guys have told me as well that uh, the position of these items on the table is actually important to the way that it works and just in case you also want to have an extra couple of aspects in there as well. But okay. It doesn't look like we're going to get to that today. This is really difficult stuff. I would need to sort of research up a little bit. So I think we better... Uh, the other things that we're currently working on are this thing right here. The, these things up here, the sort of new tech tree that we've stumbled across, the node stabilizer. I guess now that I have a hundred Vs I can go ahead and capture a node. Mm, that could be an interesting way to finish off the episode, but let's just... Uh, I just want to pick one of these pretty much at random just to see what it is. Oh, hello. So it looks like that new aspect that we discovered in the last episode, Jellum, is the one that was required. Okay, cool. So now I know everything for these. Blaze Rod, Obsidian. I just want to pick one of these and just be like, okay, well, so what makes it, what's the difference here? So let's just purchase that for six Terra, three Instrumentum, three Ignis, and three Pregantatio. So what is this all about? A wand core chiseled from obsidian has slightly greater storage potential than great wood cores. What makes it superior to great wood cores, however, is that if the level of terror it's stored inside it drops below 10%, it will slowly replenish without the use of a node. Oh my goodness! That is really cool! And that's going to take a balanced shard a piece of obsidian and an earth shard and an infusion altar as well as six precondition, six tenebrae and twelve terra. Its instability is actually lower than anything we've crafted at the moment, okay. So I'm guessing that there's this special modifier for each of these cores. Well it'd be really nice to get that for Aya because if there's one aspect that I don't use very much it's Aya so what exactly is replenish? Slowly replenish. Inside it drops. 
slowly replenish up to how far, how fast. Hmm. Very cool stuff, but yeah. Well, thanks for that game. I think what we need to do now is pretty much go off camera once again and... Oh, that thing disappeared. Once again, I need to go off camera and visit my nodes. Visit my nodes, charge this guy up. And then we'll get around to getting a node in a jar. That'll be a nice way to end the episode, I think. So I'll be right back once again. Spider jockey! Oh, jeez. <clears throat> Smite it up. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> For such a rare mob, you think they'd be a little bit easier. I'm just here still charging the wand up. We're getting good there. Just visiting my nodes. I don't think you guys on YouTube have seen it yet. Just this little bridge that I've got over here. If there's one recommendation that I can have for searching for nodes, it's to do it at night because all nodes actually emit light. Uh, it's raining right now and it's the middle of the day so you can't really see it too well, but... Yeah, the, these nodes emit light basically, so if you're looking at night they're really easy to find. Charge that guy up. Alright, I'll see you in a bit again. I'm a zombie! Undead harvester! Yeah, boy! Right, what do you get? Nine gold and a strength potion? Meh. Oh, jeez. Time to go. So I've just come across uh, this thing right here, and uh, I haven't seen enough Thorncraft 3. Oh, man. I have seen enough Thorncraft 3 to know that what we're dealing with is. Uh, Quite unexpected, but let's give it a try anyway. Looks like we've got some sort of dungeon right here. I can hear monsters. Looks like a spider. There's a zom zom. Alright. Take that guy out. Out. Okay, best way to approach this situation is... Not through the front door, I would say. Let's have a look around the back. Sort of take the high ground in this regard. Okay, we've got cobble roof, okay. Ah, loot! Many loots! Three loots! <laughs> we've got mossy cobble too. Bunch of zom zoms are falling down there because they're idiots. But I saw a skeleton as well, and I can even hear one. Okay, get some light in there, hopefully that might prevent spawns. I didn't hear anything before I was coming here. I and mean, this is completely unexpected, actually. We found one of these, um... Dungeon-y thingies. I, I just checked that aura note over there. Yeah, the, uh, the wand charging is coming quite well, by the way. That actually drained a little bit just then. Is it just constantly draining? Are oh, the stairs right there? Okay, I see fire. I hear I hear burning. Holy cannolis. Many zom zoms. I really want to try and find a corner. A nice protected corner to come down at. Okay, that looks like the corner right there. Let's take this nice and slow. Okay. Top floor. Hey. How did you even get up here? Well, I guess he used the, the spears. Well, we have we have a smite weapon, so kind of trivial. Get rid of this guy. Light everything up. Skeleton spawner, zombie spawners really close together. Oh jeez. Right, that's an angry zombie. Welcome back. Do you fear death? Too bad I don't have lava or something like that. Maybe he spawned from this thing. From the zombie spawner. That would have been interesting if he did, but I don't know. Let's just get a couple more torches down, because there might be spawners hidden in the walls. 
Man, why? It just like increases and decreases in size really bizarrely. It's kind of odd. Well, we have the advantage here. Oh! No, no longer. <laughs> I have given up said advantage. Okay, we gotta get some blocks. Oh, they're out. Okay, just you, mister. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go. What's that? It's a... Uh... Okay. Well, looks like the dungeon is ours. And it's night time and the, the sheep are coming in here to party now. <laughs> okay, what do we win? My inventory's full. Two books. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Yay. We got a V stone again. <laughs> Good to get one of those back. Really nice. That's awesome, actually. Another belt, some amber name tag, a ring of aqua, and some miscellaneousness. All right, let's uh, let's take what we can. Well, I'm going to call this a fantastic, amazing, even victory over whatever the heck this was. But I still need to charge this wand up. Actually, it does have enough. Let's have enough beasts actually to go ahead and get ourselves a node. So I guess we'll just finish off the dungeon, whatever the heck this thing is, and my skin and this guy. Okay, oh, sheep. What is that? It's a sinister node. Well, we kind of knew that. Fill up on air, nice. Alright, what's going to be a nice thumbnail for today's episode? Just got to randomly plop it in there. Sheep. Shape you want to be in the thumbnail? Let's do that. Zing. Nice. Okay, I'm going to leave those spawners there. Perhaps we could turn this into some sort of trap. Well, it definitely is the very first skeleton spawner that I've found. Really awesome. So as we run past the cow farm, I figure it's a good idea to provide a quick update on it just over here. I've got a cobblestone little wall thingy to indicate that there's an ore node way down there. Very awesome. I put some glass up up here because the adults, or rather what happens is that uh, whenever you log out and you have a situation like this, see this guy logged out, when I last logged out, he was basically pressed against the fence. And thanks to you guys in the comments, you sort of basically the idea was that Oh, the cows escape, right? Because when you log out, uh, the data for where it is is saved and it's in a block. And so you'll basically just get shoved with a, pretty much a 50-50 chance, I think, either out or in. And so yeah, that provides the escape attempt excuse, the law reason. But I'm wanting to try and prevent that by using the glass because I figure that's um, probably the most humane full block that you can find. Just using cold stone is quite rule if you ask me to bottle up your, your dudes in. Anyway, so I was looking around and thinking, well, what is the first node that I want to employ this whole uh, node in a jar business with? And I've got this uh, 49A node sitting right here. I just discovered this today, actually. And it turns out, sheep, get out of my way. It is a pale node. Well, it's a normal slash pale. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. There are several different types of nodes that we've come across. We found pure nodes, sinister nodes, fading nodes, normal nodes, and we've got pale nodes. And you guys have even been telling me about an extremely rare node known as the hungry node. Hopefully, we don't find one of those. So anyway, the film on Normicon, let's just do a quick recap about how this node in a jar business works. Coming over here. So we're going to need a 3x3 three three cube of glass with a hole in the middle for the energized aura node block. That'd be a fun block to have. And that spell's going to cost 70, which I should have still. Yes. Right then, let's give this guy a shot. I managed to make sure to bring plenty of glass. 
So the block directly beneath the node is right there. Now you've also been telling me in the comments as well, as usual, you guys know everything. <laughs> uh, the whole ethereal essence thing that we were going over last episode, the mad hunt for ethereal essence, it turns out I'm a complete dum-dum. Uh, ethereal essence actually comes from any node, as it turns out, and uh, not just ones that are in silverwood trees. So I basically uh, wasted a bunch of pure nodes. Ugh. Oh well. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. The more the more you know, I take the damage, so you don't have to. Right, so that's this filled up. The night approaches, so we've got to move quick. That's uh That's everything sorted out. I guess all I have to do is right click, right? <gasps> okay. And just like that. <laughs> wow! <laughs> that node is just in there. That is, that is awesome. How do I get it out? <laughs> oh, that's awesome! I, I, I'm gonna have to read up in the Thorbonomicon how to get that thing out. But <laughs> that's gonna be it for this episode. Ugh. <laughs> that is going to be it for this episode of Thorncraft 4.2 with Birdtrust. I hope that you guys have enjoyed your stay in this video. Thank you once again for clicking the video and supporting all really, really good stuff, guys. Hope that you have a wonderful day. Kia kaha. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four.